Howdy, howdy. Easy jeezy. Back again. Alright, part four, I think this is. Tips and tricks for Volkswagen cylinder heads. And maybe a little bit more. Uh, okay, we've already covered some on spark plugs, spark plug readings, cleaning the threads, uh, valve springs, uh, valve spring pressure, uh, shimming up valve springs, um, all kinds of little odds and ends, even some stuff I can't remember. But uh, little pyrotechnics there too, I think it was. But, but wait, there's more! Don't turn off that dial. I got tons more. Uh, I'm having flashbacks as I'm going through this stuff and, and thinking of things all the time. And uh, as long as we're covering heads and you want tips and tricks and uh, we're teaching here, uh, I don't hold nothing back from you folks. I'm going to show you all I got. And uh, as time goes on, maybe I'll think of some more. But uh, anyhow, you know, I'm way overdue for a shout out video. And I just can't spend that much time on it now. And I don't have my crib sheet with me. But And if I just name a few names, I'm going to leave some people out. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And I just, uh, it's unreal. It's unreal. This is all happening so fast. And I'm learning so much and meeting so many fantastic people. And I'm actually getting to communicate with some people I've been watching for years. And uh, it's just so cool. I can't thank you enough. And it comes from the heart, man. It comes from the heart. I just hope I can do something for somebody else like you folks have done for me. Thanks so much. Ah, anyhow, ah. okay, tips and tricks and uh, head work and uh, tools, man, <laughs> ah. Ah, I gotta dry my eyes, I can't see her, <laughs> oh boy, I don't know, I just keep getting these, a lot of, a lot of good things, alright, um, I, I, I found this neat tool, and, uh, you know, we were talking about my valve spring compressor and uh, what a what a handy tool that was. And and here's another one that uh, that could really help somebody out if they were in a bind out there on the out in the sand. You know, like I was saying, I I I did a lot of my stuff far from home. Uh, built myself a sand rail and and always had performance engines and stuff. And uh, uh, the other day. Uh, Darren broke a valve spring and and he mentioned I bet he's got one of these because he mentioned that he changed the valve spring in the car I'm not exactly sure how he did his but uh, anyhow here's a neat little tool and I think it's self-explanatory you got your rocker arm assembly on here you take that off you leave your push rods in or take them out and you this shaft this is a kit that you buy and it goes right there inside this head isn't there's no cylinders on this this is my uh, future 1776 build but but I think you get the idea here you can see this is uh, pushing it down and and you can see that right there you know if you had to uh, install the you know if the valve springs broke it's gonna come off in pieces or you know they're about the, the issue is getting that keeper getting those little keepers on the valve stem that's the trick and Maybe you've got double springs and you've got an inner one that cracked. You found a little piece of metal in here or, or uh, you found it and, and you got to get this outer spring. You got to get it compressed so that you can expose the keeper and take a little magnet and get those out and then get your new spring installed. And you can do that on the car uh, in an emergency. This I'd hate to even think of doing it in a, in a regular car, a sedan or something, but uh, like I was saying, my sand rails and, and my Manx buggy and, and different vehicles, you know, where the engine's hanging out there. And, uh, you know, if you're on vacation and you don't have access to a garage and stuff, it, it just is something that's available and uh, darn handy to have in an emergency. So, uh, uh, and you can see, I, I threw this head out there just so you could see what the, what the stock one, remind you what the stock one looks like with the uh, with the valve springs on there. So you just take your rocker arm shaft and this goes in place on the two studs that holds your rocker arm shaft. Alright, now 
I left this out for a reason. Uh, tips and tricks. Okay, your, uh, your engine's uh, running and uh, it's snapping and popping or, uh, you know, you've, uh, I told you I had a, a couple of the valve latch closed up and I, I reached underneath, I couldn't spin my push rod so I knew it was tight and it actually caused a lean condition and you could tell by looking at the spark plugs and the next morning when I, on a cold engine, when I went to adjust it, that's what I found and that was the cause. But uh, something else that can cause that is if this uh, intake manifold gasket is leaking. And uh, one way to, to test for that, let me make sure I got this zoomed back now. Oops, probably. Might have been missing some of that, but that's okay. <sighs> All right, I just got a can of, uh, your engine's running. It's idling, but it's not running as good as you think it should. And when you take off, it's, it's bucking and snorting and stuff. One of the ways that I've always used to uh, test for vacuum leaks is you can use anything. You can use carburetor cleaner. You can use brake parts cleaner. Now you don't. We want to be careful not to to spray it around the air cleaner itself because that's going to suck in and change the way your engine operates as well. But what you can do is just you can while it's running, you can you can squirt it in the areas that you're, are suspect and see if you've got a leak, a leaky intake manifold gasket. Um, maybe something happened and uh, you've got a vacuum leak and over extended period of time that's not good for your engine cause you expensive problems in the long run and that's just another little trick I learned now uh, for performance and uh, <laughs> this is something often overlooked by a lot of people when you mash the throttle you have somebody else get in your car and push the throttle to the floor come back and check your linkage and see if you actually are getting full throttle. You may be leaving 15, 20 horsepower laying there because your throttle on your carburetor isn't opening all the way. So, you know, make sure it's fine if it idles right, but, you know, the little set screw on your cable, that stuff gets loose, and even in, in any car, make sure that you're getting full throttle when you ask for it in the end, you know, when, from the driver's seat. Um, here's another little deal. I, I might just take you off the stand here. And I uh, apologize for the moving around and all that sort of stuff, but I think it, it just make this one a little bit easier. And, and uh, if you uh, didn't get a chance to check out my other videos, uh, go to my uh, YouTube channel. And I, I've tried to make a playlist, and I've tried to uh, put all this stuff in some sort of an order that makes sense. And, uh, okay, what I wanted to show you in particular on this is when you run these uh, dual carbs, doesn't matter which kind they are, that just happens to be the one it is, but uh, the uh, you'll have trouble. You won't probably. Let me grab one from something else here. Okay, here's a, here's a 13 millimeter right here. Not 13 millimeter, it's... Uh, eight millimeter use a 13 millimeter wrench on it the one I'm always losing you this is happens to be a Berg setup and <laughs> that guy built beautiful stuff and it happens to work but if you're using uh, Delorto or Weber carbs and you can't get the nut on to uh, tighten it down or you can't get a socket on it uh, this this is the solution right underneath here this is a small uh, nut uh, several places sell them. I, uh, MP or Bug Pack or whoever it is that uh, sells all that aftermarket stuff. Um, it's a uh, it's a smaller it's a smaller screw. Takes a, an 11 millimeter wrench instead of a 10, and you can you can see how much smaller that is. That'll that'll get you a little bit more room, and uh, might make all the difference. And you know I think. Yeah, you buy them on these uh, cards, you know, I think you can get them four at a time or uh, I'm not sure the hardware stores in those type of places carry them. Uh, I spoke earlier in a, a video about uh, uh, cutting the, you know, replacing valve guides and uh, here is the tool that I showed you in an earlier video that uh, you cut the boss 
Here's, here's one with the valve guide removed, and that's pretty much stock. Here's one that the valve guide was cut. This is from years ago. I don't throw much away if I can help it. Uh, but uh, I don't know if you could see this. You could probably do it in a hand drill, but I like to do it in a drill press with real good light. And this thing just cuts down there, lickety split. You just can't believe it. Because what you're, what we're talking about is putting a, a double valve spring. These are some, uh, some old Gene Berg springs that I've keep uh, for that dream engine that I will someday build. That's a stock spring on the top and you can see, I'm not going to open the package, but you can see the diameter difference in these double springs and they have another spring that fits a friction fit on the inside. Now the reason it does that is not only to give you more spring uh, pressure on your valve, it dampens the vibration and harmonics of the outer spring. The two springs do create friction, they do rub up against each other, but it also dampens. And there's some pretty cool videos out there. One of these days I'm going to find that one I saw where there's a slow motion uh, video of what a valve spring is doing in a car application. Uh, let's see. What other else I want to do? Okay, now let's see. Okay, gaskets, carburetor gaskets that go on the head. We're gonna. This is all about heads, right? I would rather use this worn out gasket here on the left. This is a a fiber uh, gasket that's used. I'd rather use that one than this brand new metal one that come in the kit. Matter of fact, I do not use the metal ones. That that just goes away. But it has a function as well and I can show you right now what one of those functions would be and that is when you're uh, thinking about porting your heads and matching your intake manifold to your your port you what what people are talking about when they do that you can take a gasket say you have a set of ported heads um, by somebody else and you buy them that way. There's some sort of, you know, all the heads that you buy are going to be basically, you can get a round port, wedge port, D port, uh, there's a lot of different kinds, but what you could do is uh, if you got a snug fitting gasket on, on one of these, you could you could put that on there and then you, you grind it with a, a file or a dremel or a pocket knife or whatever it is to the shape of that port and then with that gasket, just like you were going to use it, you can write on there a pen or pencil or marker. You would transfer that to the intake manifold in the same way and trace that pattern so you have an exact match. And that's one of the things that they is included when you're talking about a professional porting job. Uh, sometimes requires you to send the uh, intake manifold with the head so that they can do that for you professionally. Now, there was an issue here that I really wanted to uh, to show you here. Now, okay, porting and polishing. Okay, this, as you'll see, that's really old and dirty. This is a stock head, okay? And they will sell you, sometimes they'll sell you a head that looks like this. Let's let's get these side by side and drop everything on the floor so you can you can see from the same angle. I want you to see this. Okay. You see that brass valve guide and the it goes way down there and the uh, the base is missing. And on, on this older gosh there it is. This older stock one, you can see where the uh, the aluminum, there's more support for the valve guide. And what a lot of companies do, thinking they're doing you a big favor, is, is they just get in there and grind all that stuff out. They just grind you a big hole and they then they put in the valve guide and 
I don't know if you've ever had a valve guide come loose, but it's it's not a good thing. <laughs> it can spoil your vacation. And uh, it's probably the quick and dirty way of giving you some improved flow. And yes, it will give you more flow. Uh, and you can improve on that, but you can get just as much flow by not destroying that, that valve guide boss. And I, and I hope you... I hope that's clear to you that you can see that right there. Um, now, here's another little little point we can look at. When you're in here porting, you can see, I can see, I hope you can see, I hope we can see. Where's my little, where's my little pointer? Okay, okay. When you're looking in here, man, oh, it's always fun. Trying to get these camera angles in the right light. When you're in here porting, you're going to see a bump right here. And you're going to be tempted to, uh, well, get that bump out of the way. It's going to improve my flow and I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to break the sound barrier. And you can see that is in the one that I didn't like the, uh, gosh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Sorry. That I didn't like the uh, valve guide boss. I think I lost my memory. I think I ran out of memory. I'm getting down to three minutes, so I gotta hurry it up. Anyhow, that is part of the the base of the spring. If you if you grind through that, if you cut that away, trying to improve flow, you could run the risk of of cutting right into your head here. So don't get carried away when you're large in that. Uh, there's everything's there for a reason. And oh, let's see. Boy, we covered an awful lot. If I think of some more stuff, I'll post another video. Thanks again to everybody for your views and subscribing. And sorry about the emotional outburst there. That's just me. And uh, we'll keep doing this between learning how to post up and edit and do all the things to uh, make this fun. It's uh, It's been a real struggle, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. And uh, I hope to, hope to keep going and showing you guys what I've learned over the years. So uh, take care, keep coming back, and check out these other channels. Uh, there's a lot of cool people out there. VW Darren, uh, uh, James Freddy just signed up, and he's got some awesome stuff on uh, auto body and paint. Uh, my friend Pete, uh, I, I said I wasn't going to do that. I'm sorry. Uh, there's just too many to list. But uh, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, easy jeezy out.